Good evening. What's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here, jumping in on this July 4th, 2021 date, Sunday, about 6.07 p.m. West Coast time here in Northern California, where we're baking once again. Bacon. Not bacon, but bacon. You get it. A lot of earthquake activity going on around the globe, including a 2.5 into portions of Northern California. Pretty interesting activity taking place in the Intermountain West regions uh, into the central part of Wyoming, of all places. Let's go ahead and talk about that activity in a minute. Let's go ahead and cover some movement into Northern California, into the uh, east side of the Sierra Nevadas. A 2.5 earthquake striking north of Susanville. Okay, a lot of uh, old volcanic activity uh, throughout the land up here, including Mount Lassen, Mount Shasta, other uh, volcanoes around the region. I was just up there at Mount Lassen, checking out some boiling mud pots. It was pretty cool. They were pretty active, let me tell you. 2.5, 3.8 kilometers below surface for this uh, earthquake there, north of Susanville. It's an automatic review. We'll see if they get, uh, uh, see if it gets upgraded or updated by the USGS. The 4.1 striking out here, well east, well east of Yellowstone National Park. This does not have anything to do with Yellowstone National Park. It is not volcanic, I believe. Purely plate tectonic, tectonic on a wide scale. You can kind of see the movement of some mountain ranges out here over time. These mountain ranges kind of built up over pressure. You can see this little hook horseshoe type area, Bighorn Mountains. 4.1 near 10 Sleep, Wyoming, 14.4 kilometers below surface. That's pretty deep. It's actually pretty deep for this area. As uh, far as any folks reported filling it, I it says two or so. I don't know if that's actually accurate or not. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty deep earthquake, and there's not a whole lot of population density out there. Um, but far as historical seismic activity, we don't see a whole lot of movement into this part of Wyoming. It's right up against, right up against the North American Craton, if not uh, kind of like into it in a way. <clears throat> the North American Craton. What, what is the North American Craton? You guys hear me talk about it quite a bit. It's not something you throw in salads. It's not a crouton, right? Even though it sounds pretty good. The North American Craton is, it's, it's a, well, let's get into it. There's an image right there of the North American Craton. Continental crust that has remained relatively stable for the past 600 million years. Okay, so that means that not a whole lot of plate tectonics, not a whole lot of vol volcanic activity in the lithosphere. Okay, wh what is the lithosphere? It's basically the uppermost part of the earth, the crust that we're walking on. It's the upper, it's a rock layer, so to speak. It's not melted, it's not, it's not the center earth, it's not magma. It's the upper portion of the crust of the earth, the uppermost. Uh, it's basically cool, rigid, and brittle materials consisting of different types of rocks and strata, material like that, that make this layer called the lithosphere. Okay, now this area of the lithosphere, the North American Craton, um, is thick. This area is pretty thick. I want to show you guys an image real quick. And if you guys can follow that, if you guys can follow that dotted line right here, right? You see that? Let me go ahead and zoom this in a little bit so you guys can see. This dashed line is the outline of the North American Craton, the thickest layer of the lithosphere. And you can see the thickness over here on this graph. It's pretty thick. That's why we don't see a whole lot of earthquake activity, volcanic activity in this region. It's thick compared to the West Coast, right? You get the Rocky Mountains built up right up against that edge of the North American Craton. That's why we have mountain ranges all the way up through there. The Pacific Plate, that's, that's other stuff. That's North American and the Pacific Plate creating those mountains along the, the coast over here. But the Intermountain West regions, including uh, Nevada, Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, all this stuff is being pushed up against this area over lots of time, creating the uplift of mountains and whatnot over lots and lots of time, once again, okay? So there's not a whole lot to do 
to push against, or uh, there's a whole lot to push against is what I'm trying to say. Once you get pushed up against this area, you can't, there's no more. You can't really, you really can't continue to push pressure up into these areas right here just because it's so thick. This lithosphere area, this North American craton area is. And where that four pointer struck is right at the edge, right there where the North American craton is, where the thickness begins. And it's pretty deep, 14 kilometers for that four pointer there into um, Wyoming near the Bighorn Mountains. After that, folks, everything's pretty, it's gone. I mean, it's you, you run out of mountain ranges. It's relatively, relatively calm when it comes to plate tectonics. And you can see it, it's flat land out there. There's no big, huge, rocky mountains and pointed uh, landscapes. It's all pretty much flat or maybe a little bit hilly, but that's it. So that's kind of what the North American Craton is. I say it a lot. I've, I haven't really discussed it a lot too much in my past videos, but I have before. It's continental crust that has remained relatively stable for the past 600 million years, okay? And it's we always see earthquake activity right there take place in the portions of Texas as well, right around Pecos, Texas. That's where we see that. So with the tremendous amount of west coast pressure, intermountain west pressure, swinging up, um, kind of like adding on to the... Uh, the dynamics of the plate tectonic pressure gradients here. That's why we're seeing further increase in pressure inland into the North American continent right above or right right by this North American craton area. It's it's plain as view. We see it all the time. In fact, areas around North Carolina see that activity take place too. The deformed craton is where you have a lot of ancient old volcano type stuff. A lot of old older stuff. Um, uh, let's see here there's a lot to cover on this folks I don't want to go way off topic on this but I'm trying to explain where this four pointer struck at this 4.1 right up there against the North American Craton it's pretty obvious so I think in, in terms of Tectonically speaking, we're looking at a bunch, a bunch of buildup along the West Coast, an enormous amount. Um, activity has somewhat calmed down in the Pacific Northwest, but with this four pointer, this 4.1 near Ten Sleep, Wyoming, and this activity in Susanville, and all the activity we've seen in the Sierra Nevadas over Lake Tahoe and all the Intermountain West regions, Nevada. I think we're locked. We are locked and ready for something to pop off here off the coast of California along this major plate boundary. When you run up against the North American Craton, that's it. You stop. There's no more. Where's the pressure going to go? Where is it going to release? It's going to build up and build up until that's it. Something releases over here along the West Coast along the plate boundary, which is the North American and the Pacific Plate. Okay, it's pretty... It's It's... You got to look at it as a big picture. You got to step outside of your little, you know, 20 foot circle or your your little space, you know, and see plate tectonics as a whole as as a broader view. There's so much information on this, folks, if you want to look at that, look it up. Uh, but that's just kind of like the simple terms. We're looking at the end of it right there. We're looking at right there in central Wyoming area what's next i seriously think that we're going to see something along the west coast i don't know how big i don't know when but we're looking at activity ramping up uh including that 2.5 near susanville a lot of movement into nevada um you know so much so much pressure and stress can be built up and uh eventually it's got to give we haven't seen too much activity in southern california ridgecrest area this is all typical um, a microquake earthquake activity taking place down there. A little bit of movement in the southern valley uh, near Roma. But this is pretty deep as well. 14 kilometers below the surface there in the valley of all places. Um, San Francisco area seen some earthquake activity just off the San Andreas Fault. Uh, just off Pacifica. I know it's a beautiful area, but it's a very, very deadly area. I would not want to be there at all. 
um, if there was a major quake along this region. I don't think that this region is going to see something significant. Um, I think it's, it's going to either be south or it's going to be north of this Mendocino Triple Point area, Cascadia northward. But uh, it's, like I say, nobody can predict any of this. This all may just blow over and we might see a major quake in Japan. The area I've been talking about for quite a long time. This, this area right here, it's just, it's blown me away. We haven't seen any significant mega quakes out here in, in quite a while. And this area is under, like the West Coast, it's under a tremendous amount of stress. There is the five point, uh, what do we got there? 5.6, that happened late or that kind of early evening last night that should be dropping off a globe. We haven't seen any more aftershock activity there. As far as aftershock activity following those two six pointers, there definitely has been some. There's been a handful of four pointers, which is good. Um, and they're all ranging around 10 kilometers or so, but, but um, there's still definitely some pressure and increase in this region of the Peru Chile Trench an area of significant uh, earthquake activity historically and a major player when it comes to releasing pressure along the areas of the plates out here in South America so it's a, it's a region to watch pretty closely movement let's go ahead and check out uh, New Mexico northwestern New Mexico Lake Valley New Mexico 3.1 where's that at in relation to the North American Craton. Would you be surprised to see? Well, let's go back. If it were a right up against this North American Craton there, would that surprise you? Right up there, right, right about the North American Craton area, just to the west a little bit, but right up there, there is fault systems that run through here, creating mountains. Uh, it looks like you actually can see it there on the map. Pretty, pretty uh, defined. The mountain ranges here get into the uh, North American Craton region. We don't see a whole lot of earthquake activity into New Mexico, but it does happen. Pacific Northwest, folks, uh, just a couple small microquakes around the Seattle area, Mount Hood, uh, Mount Rainier area, seen a little, sig uh, not significant, but a little uptick in microquake earthquake activity see those three earthquakes well below 1.0 let's check out the trimmer map real quick um, I'm not sure if they updated it looks like they have 7.4 yes now this here is very interesting once again interesting interesting right I don't want to be corrected once again I don't I don't mind the correction to be honest um northern Sacramento Valley Southern end of the Cascadia, very southern end of the Cascadia, seen an uptick in the trimmer department, 97 epicenters, very southern end. You got a picture of the Juan de Fuca plate subducting into this area underneath the North American plate, about 30, 40 kilometers down dip, downstream, uh, some slippage going on into the Cascadia subduction zone. Go ahead and check out volcanic seismicity uh, at, uh, what was the uh, volcano we were checking out? Mount Rainier, I believe. Let's see here. A couple small microquakes. Let's check out the latest seismograph station um, within that region. Let's see if these guys will let me access the network here. Uh, I, I see a little quake right there over the past hour or so let's go back and check the uh, previous map oh yeah there's it, well defined well defined earthquakes very spiky I mean you cannot miss that one bit so a couple of small microquakes taking place there other than that I don't see any volcanic tremor volcanic activity taking place at uh, Mount Rainier whatsoever so just be on guard folks um, you know it's just I try to look at from from my earthquake stance on everything. I don't predict, predict earthquakes. I don't forecast earthquakes. I'm not that type of guy because I would be dead in the water if I attempted to. Uh, and that means anyone, no one can predict it at all. That's 100% a fact. But we can look at pressure dynamics in a certain region and look at the way the plates move. 
um, historically, we can look at swarms and look at areas that could be on on gar on on a target, so to speak, for potential seismic increase in, in uh, activity. And the West Coast, I think, if anything, is is at it right now. I think unless we see a major earthquake over here along this part of the Pacific Plate, we're going to be on target. It's one of the two. I've been looking at this for quite some time on this Pacific Plate. It's one of the two is going to have it. A little bit of movement uh, well down here, South Sandwich Islands of 5.2. But uh, overall, not a whole lot of movement way down there. Drake Passage, Scotia Sea area. Yellowstone National Park. Let's go ahead and check that out. They're right up against the, uh, right up against, well, close to the uh, North American Craton area. That 4.1, check out what a 4.1 will do to the seismograph stations in the Yellowstone National Park shows up all over the place but this is a great idea or a great time to look at uh how sensitive these equipment this equipment is some of this stuff is squashed beyond belief to where like uh, i keep saying this even if an asteroid were to hit it wouldn't even register on the seismograph stations most of these are tuned so to speak correctly Parker Peak over here picking up that 4.1, probably about the closest uh, there towards the central Wyoming area where that earthquake struck. Um, other areas, I can't, I, Old Faithful, I mean, I'm not for sure why this doesn't get amplified. Maybe it's to avoid all the regular intervals of the geyser activity possible. Possible. But uh, man, I, I tell you what, the 4.1 showed up all over the place. Pretty cool to watch. Pretty cool to see. Even Moose Creek, Idaho picking up that uh, four-pointer. But far as earthquake activity goes, far as swarming goes, um, there was a little earthquake activity over here prior to that 4.1. Right there, a couple earthquakes, you can see that. 4.1 way down here. So quite a few hours in between this little movement that activity showing up as well near pelican cone soda butte and uh, looks like the northeast entrance as well picking up that earthquake activity northwest corner of the park a little bit of earthquake activity f continuing with that little swarming that we've seen over the past few days but uh, overall overall um calming down a little bit but we will see it all it all could change folks you never know look at this activity right here kind of kind of goes from the uh, small line and it's thickening all of a sudden getting thicker some type of um, signature showing up there on the seismographs now we look we like to, I'd like to look at other stations to see if this is um, localized or if it's possibly uh, interference but looking at it uh, appears to be uh, definitely some earthquake activity taking place because you can see it showing up on this seismograph station as well um, at a distance. But it's recent, so I will keep an eye on it, uh, see what's going on. You can see it down here as well, Yellowstone National Park. We've been watching these weird, strange signatures on these graphs for a few days now. It's kind of got me wondering what's going on there at Yellowstone National Park. Is also shown up over here at Lake Hebgen, Hebgen Lake areas. All right, folks, I'm gonna jump off here, enjoy some beautiful fireworks, and hopefully get some uh, some loud noises going on, you know, and and, uh, and enjoy the uh, enjoy the evening. It's Independence Day, you know what? Definitely got to celebrate here in the states and uh, enjoy enjoy this a beautiful evening i got a whole bunch of piccolo peats i need to light off uh, i love those things man they make so much noise i love it <laughs> i absolutely love that noise that they make anyway folks have a good day have a good night stay safe out there if you are enjoying this evening uh if you're out there partying whatever you're doing um stay safe peace out have a good night guys